Hi, in this video I'll be demonstrating how to wire a distribution board with all loads protected by earth leakage. In this lab setup I have three loads. This may be your stove isolator or even your geyser or boiler isolator. Then I have a socket outlet. In the meantime it's plugged into my soldering iron and on the far right I have a lighting circuit. Here is my light switch and my associated light fitting and the lamp inside. I'll take you step by step through the wiring of this distribution board. Now it's very important to make sure that your supply cables are off. Over here I have zero volts there and the supply is off. Now in order to perform the wiring I've now chosen my three load circuits. This over here is going to be my lighting circuit. This is going to be fed to my socket outlet and this over here is going to be for my stove. In this lab we use flexible wire that is stranded. The reason we do this is because we reuse the wires for each demonstration. In your case you will probably be using solid core cable. Please take note that if you are using stranded wire it's very important to twist the strands. One can also use a boot lace type ferrule and you can crimp that to make sure that the strands do not open when you are fastening it into a terminal. For the remainder of this demonstration, I will be using these flexible wires. Now for my light circuit, I'm just choosing a circuit breaker that is 10 amps. So I have my 10 amp circuit breaker there. I'm then going to have my socket outlet circuit, which is going to have a 20 amp circuit breaker. Following which, I'm now going to use a 32 amp circuit breaker for my stove. Those are my three load circuit breakers. I now need to have an earth leakage circuit breaker this RCD provides a residual current measurement. What this does is if there is a difference in the live current and the neutral current, it will then trip the circuit breaker because that would mean some current is being lost to the earth. That means there's an earth fault. This is commonly called an earth leakage circuit breaker for that very reason. Because this earth leakage circuit breaker does not have overcurrent protection, I now need to also have an overcurrent protection device before the earth leakage device. This overcurrent circuit breaker also provides me with a disconnecting function. Every distribution board is required to have both an earth leakage circuit breaker as well as an overcurrent circuit breaker as well as a disconnecting switch. If you have something that looks like this, this is a disconnecting switch but it does not offer any overload protection. All this does is it allows you to disconnect everything that's after it but this still needs overcurrent protection and that is why I have overcurrent protection there. In this case, this particular circuit breaker also provides me with disconnecting function. So just make sure that you have earth leakage protection, overcurrent protection and the ability to disconnect everything. I'm now going to demonstrate how to wire the DIN rail DB board. Now the earth wire is this one over here signified by the green and yellow coloring. This needs to be wired to a suitable bus bar. In this DB board there are three bus bars. They do not have a color coding. If the bus bar has a green color it's telling you it's for the earth connections. In South Africa our neutral wire is black so the bus bar usually has a black color like that. Now in this case because the DB board does not have color coding I'm going to select the bus bar on the right as my earthing bus bar and the bus bar on the left as my neutral bus bar. That means all my black wires are going to be wired to this bus bar which is going to be my neutral bus bar and all my earth conductors are going to be wired to this bus bar because this will be my earthing bus bar. Right, I've now connected my earth wire to the earthing bus bar. I've also connected the live wire coming in and the neutral coming in to my DB board. Notice everything is still off. The size of the conductor is 16 millimeter because this is a 63 amp circuit breaker. Now the live is coming in there and it will come out here. So what I need to do is loop it back to the input of the earth leakage circuit breaker. As a general convention in South Africa, live inputs come in from the top and the loads are fed from the bottom. And I need to connect the live from the overcurrent circuit breaker, which will also be my main switch, all the way round to the input of the earth leakage circuit breaker. 
Right, so here's my overcurrent circuit breaker. I've now wired the live and the neutral to the input of my earth leakage circuit breaker, live and neutral. Now what I need to do is I need to go from the output of my earth leakage circuit breaker, the neutral needs to go to the neutral rail, the live needs to feed the load circuit. Remember that in this installation, everything is protected by earth leakage. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a neutral wire and connect it to the common neutral rail over here. Right, so there's the neutral and here's the neutral rail. All the neutrals from all my loads will now be connected to the same neutral rail after earth leakage, which means everything after earth leakage, all my three loads will be protected by earth leakage. And then obviously everything protected by the overcurrent circuit breaker over here. Now what I need to do is wire my live to my load circuits. I need to give these three load circuits the current for them to operate. Right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect this conductor from there all the way around to there, giving these three loads live voltage. I will then short out these three loads with a bus bar. Now from the earth leakage, my neutral is going there, my live loops around to the first circuit breaker, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to short out these circuit breakers using a bus bar. So that means that all three of these circuit breakers will now be connected to that same live connection. Bus bars are bought in long lens. All I need to do is measure how many circuits I need to feed and then I cut off the required amount. In this case, I've just used a hacksaw and now I can insert the bus bar. Right, notice that the bigger cable is at the back of the bus bar, otherwise it will make the bus bar go uneven. And then when the terminal closes, it squashes the conductor, the live conductor onto that bus bar. It's now time to connect my three circuits. I have my lighting circuit, I have my plug circuit, and then I have what would be my stove or possibly geyser. Remember, if you are connecting this to a geyser or boiler, it has to be after earth leakage according to the SAN standard. And now I'm gonna demonstrate the connections. All the earth cables are common. So I can now just work with all the green and yellow cables and wire them to my common earth bus bar. Now I apologize for the cables looking like this. Remember that we are using flexible cables in the lab so that we can reuse the cables. Right, I've now wired all my earth wires to my common earthing bus bar. I'm now going to wire all my neutrals to the common neutral bus bar. Even though these are different circuits, all the neutrals are common to this one point. Right, all the neutrals are now connected to my common neutral rail and they'll all be protected via earth leakage because there is the neutral wire feeding this bus bar. So all I need to do now is connect my individual live circuits. Right, so here is my lighting circuit. This cable is 1.5 millimeter. Right, I now have my lighting circuit and I'm going to connect that to my 10 amp circuit breaker. I now have my plugs circuit which will now be connected to my 20 amp circuit breaker. And I now have this wire here for my boiler or stove circuit. Right, all the load circuits are now connected. The earths are connected, the neutrals are connected. And now what I can do is do a last check. So coming in from my supply, going through my main switch, which is also offering overcurrent protection from the output of my main switch, looping around to the input of my earth leakage. Going from the input of the earth leakage to the output, neutral going to the common neutral rail, live going back around there to feed all my load circuit, everything protected by earth leakage. These three shorted out with this bus bar, three load circuits coming from the output of these circuit breakers, earthing wires from my load circuits all connected there, all connected to the supply earthing conductor, and all my neutrals connected to the common neutral rail. I'm now going to energize the DB board and demonstrate it working. Right, I now have my multimeter here and I'm going to do some measurements. I have energized the supply, so that means that if I take a measurement here, notice that the incoming feed is sitting at 227 volts. That means I have a significant shock hazard over here. Even though the main switch is down, please note that voltage is still present at the incoming terminals. Now, if I measure at the output, notice that there is no voltage there. Only when I close the circuit breaker will there be a voltage. And there is the supply voltage sitting at the bottom of the main switch. So that means it would now also be sitting here at the input of my earth leakage because it is fed round like that. The output of my earth leakage will only show the supply voltage when I close my earth leakage.
and once I've closed my earth leakage, only now that my main switch and my earth leakage is up, will I have a supply voltage sitting here. But in order for each load circuit to get current, I first need to close each one of these circuit breakers. So I've now allowed current to flow to my boiler or stove, whatever it is, my plug circuit and my lighting circuit. My DB board is now feeding all the loads. If I drop the earth leakage, all my loads are now disconnected. If I lift my earth leakage and drop the main switch, everything after the main switch is now disconnected, which means all my loads are now disconnected. Right, so everything is now connected and switched on. Here is my isolator. It is currently in the on position. If I disconnect it, you can see the illumination is going off, telling me that whatever would be connected from this is now offline or disconnected. I have my plug circuit over here and it is in the on position. If I switch it off, you'll see the light on my soldering iron go off. So my plug circuit is now energized and there on the far right, you can see the light is in the on position. My lamp is on and I can switch it off with that switch. I now just need to put my cover on. Right, my cover is now on and at this point you would need to blank off any spaces which you've left open. You can block out these spaces by using blanks like these or vinyl which can be stuck at the back. You would now need to label all your circuits, for example lights, your geyser or your stove, your main switch with warning label and your earth leakage. Thanks for watching and cheers.